I'm super flirty and I love boys. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of figured that I was going to get into a show band. So when she's and like I a BB moment, which is like a beautiful black moment. Do we get any of those in this episode? Black. We have a chaotic vibe moment of the chaotic vibe moment. And you're watching Black by Reality. Black by Batty. And those who love us. First question. Was getting into a showman's ever a part of your plan from the start? I mean, I know me. So going into this, I knew that a showman's was going to be a real possibility. I'm super flirty and I love boys. So uh yeah i i kind of figured that i was gonna get into a show band did i think it was gonna be corey on the first day absolutely not but um it it was such a great surprise i um yeah i i I love corey and i I didn't think after meeting everyone on the first day corey was probably the last guy i thought i was ever gonna be in a show band with just because of like age and him being like a student i didn't think i would we would click so well but i i'm so glad that we started talking on like day like 12 we started talking late in the season and um i i i think things worked out everything's great right i don't know awesome Corey in the beginning said he didn't want a romantic relationship in the big brother house but you seem persistent in wanting to be more than friends what did you see in him that his original boundaries didn't deter you? Oh, geez. Uh, yeah, I mean, Corey and I were started off as allies and allies only, right? When he came to me with a final two, I had already like developed a little crush on him. So I was like, okay, yay, final two, but like, are you gonna kiss me or not, right? Like, what's the vibe here? I, I, we just clicked so well and I love talking to him. In a house full of just like annoying, obnoxious people, he was like the one person that I like didn't feel like overwhelmed with. I could just sit with him and it was re- actually relaxing. I didn't feel like, um, like the, I didn't feel the pressure of the game and, uh, and all of this, di- all of these different factors, right? Like uh, when I was speaking to him, it was, uh, I, I, I guess I was persistent, right? Maybe just a little bit. He told me that his boundaries were cuddling and I was like, well, let's, let, let's see if that's how true that is. Right. Um, I, it's just, it's just something about him. I don't know. You gotta meet Corey. He's literally the funniest guy I have ever met. And I, in a house full of like really funny people, him being the funniest is like a big deal. I, he's so funny. He's so witty. He's so intelligent. And I, I just knew that I, I had to get to know him more. And I, I, I wanted, I wanted more. I don't know. <laughs> How do you want fans to remember your game this season? Wait, sorry. What was the question? How do you want fans to remember your game this season? Okay. I want fans to remember my game this season as, I don't know, hopefully not just someone that was being carried to the end. I know how annoying that is to watch when someone's just like, you know, especially when someone's not winning competitions, they're just letting uh, they're just going with the flow of things or, or floating around and going to whoever's in power. I'm really hoping that that that's not what the fans saw or perceived. I really was trying at the beginning to lay low. I know how this game works. And I know that like, you know, uh, creating alliances and like making all these big game moves at the beginning can cause you to have a big target on your back. And I really wanted to make it beyond the first few weeks. So, uh yeah, I, I try to be as strategic as I could be with with what I have, with, with what I had, right? So, like, I at the beginning, I was trying to lay low. And then, you know, once we wrapped it up and we were, like, halfway through the, through the season, I, I was just making it week by week, t- trying to maneuver as best as I could. It, it's just so hard. I, I hope fans remember 
know that, that, that it, it's a hard, it is so difficult week by week. There's just so much press, pressure and so much stress. I hope I handled it. Uh, I thought I handled it well. I hope the fans saw that. Please explain to us what was happening in the house in the moments before your eviction. Oh my God, complete chaos right before my eviction. Everything was happening so fast. I had just been on the block next to Blue. Uh, so that felt like a, a whirlwind of emotions, right? Uh, uh, she had just been sort of blindsided and uh, a double eviction, never easy. The first one wasn't easy and there were like 11 people in the house then. This one with, with six people was even harder. Everything was happening so, so fast. When Bowie won, I when Bowie Jane won, I really thought, I had a chance, right? I had been trying to get closer to her all week and try to be like her her bestie in this game, but overall I just couldn't I just couldn't convince her to not put me up. And I, I told her she when she told me that I was going up next to Felicia, I told her I was like, Bowie, if you put me up, I'm going home. They're they're going to evict me. They talking about Matt and Jag. Cause I knew I knew what their plans were, right? Blue was at the door. I was definitely next on their list. Um, I, I, I just couldn't do anything. It, it was just heartbreaking. And I didn't think that I was going to be that overwhelmed with like my emotions. I was just begging and pleading Matt and Jag, like, please, please, I'll keep you guys safe. I, I'll do anything. Please keep me in. And I, Jag couldn't even look at me. So I knew then that there was nothing I could do and that that was the end. That was the end for me. Outside of your and Corey's evictions, when were you most frustrated you didn't have the power to shift the game? Um, definitely last, so I was definitely, after me and Corey's blind side, definitely the most frustrated last night during my eviction i'm looking at bowie and i'm telling her like bowie do not put me up i am gonna go home they told me they want me to go home like they or i heard that they that i'm next on the list i'm next to go home like do not do this it was so frustrating because i just couldn't get through to her no matter what she has like the these like goo goo gaga eyes for matt and jag and she's like in this sort of trance uh that i just couldn't pull her away from at the end of the day like she's just so deep with Matt and Jag that it, it, I just, I don't know. I was like, Bowie, come on, wake up, like play this game for yourself and not for them. She's telling me, she's like, Oh, I have to put you up. I made a promise to Sari and I can't put the boys up. And I'm like, why can't you put the boys up? Like they can, they, they should go home. Like she, it, it was just Bowie was, has been the swing vote all season. She's been a deciding factor. She's been the biggest floater, but hey, it's worked for her. Uh, it was just so frustrating that I wasn't able to get her on my side. Why do you think no one has taken a shot at Matt and Jag? I think no one has taken the shot at Matt and Jag because no one but them have been able to win anything. Oh my God, they are huge comp beasts not just in the physical comps, but in the mental ones as well. Ugh, it is so frustrating. And these competitions are so much harder than they look. Like, trust me, I thought going in here that I was going to be some sort of comp beast, right? Like, I, I got the mental down. I, I, I got the physical. I can do it all. But no, I got there day one. And oh, my God, that balance beam crash course was hard. And um, I just don't think anybody has taken the shot at them because they've, they haven't been able to. And the uh, only other people who have won HOH since like Cam is Bowie Jane. And Bowie Jane is their little groupie who will never put them up, will never vote to evict them. So that's that. As a BB super fan, was this everything you thought it would be? Any surprises? Oh my God. As a super fan, this has been like more than I could have ever dreamed of. Oh, every day I would wake up, even in like the, even on the hard days, I would wake up and I'd be like, I cannot believe I'm in the Big Brother house. And I'd look at the cameras, look at the mirrors. 
uh, hear the people in the walls. And I was like, oh my God, like I'm actually here. Every Literally every single day I would wake up and be just so grateful that I, that I got to play this game, that I got to be in the house. As like, as stressful as it is, uh, it, it's it's my dream and it, it, it came true and I cannot cannot believe that any surprises I was I mean I'm surprised at how cold the house is it is cold like freezing like sweatpants sweater jacket on top of that Bowie Jane was wearing her parka all summer long because it's just so freezing in there um what what else surprised me I mean it, it, the, the fluorescent lights are it, it, like it's like you're you're in a set and you feel like you're in, I, I, I'm surprised at how easily uh, you forget that there are cameras around truly like eventually it just becomes your home and the last 86 days that has just been my life and I really didn't think about you know how like every move of mine was being like watched until like I'm going into the storage room and as soon as I'm going to go reach for the button to request for the storage room to open, it opens up for me. And I'm like, oh my God, like they're watching. I I, I forget. Um, but it's been such an incredible experience. I, I, I can't believe that this happened to me. It literally feels so surreal to be back in like real life and be able to control like my own light switch is weird looking in the mirror and knowing that there's no camera behind it is so weird and trippy right now, but um, it was great. I loved it. It was an amazing experience. How would you have played the game had you not met Corey? What, um, had I not met Corey, this game would have been a hundred times harder. Corey was my rock in the game. Like he, Again, I was surrounded by so much chaos and stress. Corey was the person that I could actually like sit down and just talk to and uh, talk non-game to and just relax and, and be myself and not feel like uh, I'm being like manipulated or lied to or being talked to just for the sake of, you know, game purposes. So um, if he wouldn't have been there, oh my God, it would have been so much harder, but I, I definitely would have, would have done it. I would have done my best. Uh, I'm so glad that Corey was there though, uh, to, to help me out, to help each other out. You know, I, I, I hope that I was able to, to help him in, in this game as well, just as he helped me. How much of Jag and Matt's success in the game do you credit to their competition wins versus strategy? Uh, well, first off, let's start off with Jag wouldn't even be in the game if it weren't for Matt's path to power win, right? So Jag has was a huge target from the beginning for really no reason for winning Cockadoodle Zoom, I guess. Uh, but Jag was a target from the start. He wouldn't have made it this far without Matt's uh, path to power win. I think Matt and Jag are still in the game. A little bit of both. Um, but I mean, at this point in the game, it's so late in the game, competition wins are everything. And they are just, they have just been dominating veto after veto. Uh, Jag, I think, has like seven wins, uh, two HOHs, five vetoes. That is insane. Matt has now three vetoes. They're, they're comp beasts. And it's, I mean, they've played it. They, they played it really well and they made the right move evicting Corey last week evicting me this week because we were definitely going to come after them the second we got the chance um it's it, it's been a bit of both but they, they're they're doing great they're, they're great players uh I guess I'll admit do you think Bowie Jane will regret nominating you uh, Bowie Jane will regret nominating me if Matt and Jag tell her to regret nominating me. Uh, she's their little puppy dog fangirl. She doesn't have any thoughts of her own. I am really salty about my eviction, obviously still, but like, I mean, she'll, she'll see. She'll see when they turn their back on her and get her evicted that, you know, they aren't who they 
say they are and they're not loyal to her in the way that she thinks um i don't know i she, she'll see she'll see because at the end of the day i do think that man jag have a final four with sari and felicia i mean it would be the smartest thing to do right for them to pair up with the other duo who i'm sure in their eyes it are weak competitors and you know they can take on in, in the final four so I, i'm sure that bowie jane is the next one on their list uh we'll see what happens